burst. Okay, then you come down to your throttle handle assembly. You see this here, this little groove? There's a line in here. That one right there. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna push in and go back, just like this. Okay. Which is, it's all the way back. A lot of times it, it won't go all the way. Okay, then watch, you're gonna squeeze the trigger. Okay, and that is adjusted. That's all you do. So, what happened with this thing is uh, these are the bearings, or what's left of the bearings. So, those two there is what this one rides on, just like that, right? This is what they're supposed to look like, right here. And there's your part number. See that? 4138740 And so there's a couple, there's two different style bearings that go on this. This style, right? And then and then this style. Oh, not that one. What's that other bearing not right here? And then one like this. One just like this. And that race rides on this one. Just like that. So we're gonna have to rivet that one on number for this i'm not sure i lost the bag so first thing i'm gonna do clean everything up go from there i'm gonna use my shorts here i kind of blew my ass out on it so we're gonna use them use these up get old uh Get old dickies, man. Now I think I need a new knife. Now. And you're just gonna run this through. And you can just simply use the drive shaft, a gun cleaning tool. You know, like I said, the bearings got disintegrated, so that stuff is probably all through this. Luckily, it didn't damage other stuff so far. Right, so I'm just going to use this, just run this right down through the center. Just like that. That's probably good. That looks pretty clean. Okay. So I'm not lay this the other way. I do know this is the top, and someone actually did mark this at one time. That may have been me, honestly. Hell, I don't remember, though. I'm going to pull this off. Slip this off. I'm just laying this stuff out in such a way I know which way it goes back on. Got 
got a bearing there and it's okay. this clean valve. Some metallic paste. Hit that one more time. Got most of it. good now. So final diagram. Don't tell you much. This kind of tells you the orientation of certain things. So I don't know. Let's see what we get into now. Um, uh, we got to change out a bearing, which we have to rivet it on to this tube. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna swap that out. So this guy right here. Should have only be one rivet here and one right there. Take a certain low pro low profile uh, rivet because you don't want the rivet hanging down into the tube. All right, so we're gonna clean this tube out real quick. Just like we did before. The drive shaft here. And run it all down in there. Alright. Hmm. 
so let's get this bearing on there. I said there's two types. The one with the race like that, and then the one with the spline for the spline shaft portion of it. So this one, this guy here, so he's gonna line the hole up. Now I need to figure out what rivet this is. Let me find a drill bit here just to measure this up. Ain't that size. Alright, so I went to the steel dealership to get me a one freaking rivet. And of course, they didn't have it, they had to order it, they wasn't sure when, uh, you know, it would be in, and you know, they would call, ask that, forget about it. So I just went to Home Depot, and what size this is, it's in, it's a 532nd, so it's it's in between a eighth inch, right, that's a 532nd drill bit, right? That means it's in between, uh, you know, one eighth and three sixteenths. So it was, it was in between that. So I opted to get a three sixteenths rivet, and uh, of course this is uh, the one that came out of it is, is a steel rivet. It's not aluminum. So, so we'll keep that in mind. Um, anyways, so I got a 3 16 So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just drill the hole out a little bigger. Not, not a big deal. You know, whatever. I don't got time for this. The things I got to get done here. So I do believe this is... You know, that's all. We'll drill a bit. We're just going to drill this hole out here. Okay, draw that out. I'm going to want to draw out the plastic on this. And this one here is an eighth inch grip. So, because you can't have it hanging down in the hole. It has to be compressed. So now we have to draw this out. Technically, we're going just one millimeter bigger. So put this on there. So we'll line the hole up there. See that line the hole up? Slip this in there. Of course, it's a tight fit. Slip right in there. Yes, yeah, that may. Hopefully, that does not hang down like that. If it hangs down, then we're screwed. Anyways. So, let's rip it this on there. Perfect. This will serve its purpose. See, locked on there, we're good. It is above. It is above. See that? It is above the where the drive shaft will ride. I'll just check that real quick. So guys, if you could just get the get the original one. Yeah, see that does not rub anywhere. All 
right, so we're good there. That just holds this thing steady. And really this, these grooves lock in to the housing. So this, that just rivet just holds it steady. And that's it, so. But go get the 532nd um, rivet from the dealership if you can. That way you don't have to drill it out because if this thing needs service again and the next guy won't probably realize that's not the factory rivet uh, not a big deal though and make sure this ring is on right here okay go through this upper tube first okay just like that and that ring okay this this little clip right here actually stops on that bearing in there okay and then we slip this ring in and you have to line up with the notch here See that notch? Line up that groove there, slip it in. Alright, so now we're going to put the liner in. Just like that. Okay? Now we're going to put some grease on this. This is the upper part, right? Remember guys, this side here is the power head side. Like I said, this thing came in here just in pieces. Okay, so we want to lube this up pretty good. Okay, it still does make a Pacific grease for this. Okay, you're gonna twist this to you engage the splines. Okay, now one thing I, I want to do, I want to put some grease down in here. Okay, twist it to get the line up, push it down to the bottoms out. So now that's straightened out. Now, so the placement of these rings is very important. This, when, when you extend this thing out, when this is sliding out, this will catch this and keep it from separating all the way. If this clip wasn't here or this wasn't here, it would just pull right apart. Another time, I'm gonna put this off to the side. So now we're going to load this in to this. So this, so this portion has to be started in through here. My right, gosh, so again, we're going to loop this up a little bit there. It's very important. You don't want to forget this, forget this part here. Alright, so we're gonna squeeze a little bit on there. Like I said, you can get the 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 tele the telescoping lube from uh, Still Diller if they'll sell it to you, which I'm sure they would. I mean, you want to lather this thing. You know what I mean? You want to really get each side here. Right, so I'm going to start down the tube here. I'm just going to kind of rotate this as it's going in.
using the silicon. This shit's like $13 a little too, so a little excessive here. I'm just gonna hit this one more time. Make sure all this grease is getting in there. Dirt there. You guys see the principle here. So once I load this in, this cannot go past this now. Right? Very important to pay attention to that. You don't put that in, you're slipping the part, you just keep on going. It falls right out. Alright. And also, the bearing we just put on. That's what this portion here rides on, is that race right there. This is not necessary, but I'll just put a little dab of grease on this. Alright, so now we're going to go from the bottom in and slip it up on in here. Again, line your ring up. Put the notch on the top. Just like that now we're loaded so now you're gonna see you're gonna see it poke up so you're gonna see it poke up right through that hole there Sometimes you gotta give it a little bit of help. I guess I can push on this end. seated into the bearing. Yeah, let's slip right back out. Alright. Right, so now you need to finish pushing your liner in. That way that doesn't move around on you. So when the gear head is seated on the shaft, it pushes this pretty much all the way back flush in that race. It's not dead on, probably off a couple mil. But that's what I was worried about. That all looks good though. Just remember, you slip that on, it shoves this back. All right. So now the lower portion is set. All right, so now two new bearings here. And these old bastards are like 20 bu 25 bucks each. Couldn't believe that. Anyway, so now we're ready to load in the old tube. The old tube. Let's use this as a gramming rod. Get that on through there. Okay. There you go. See all that? I think it's time to maybe do it one more time.
tell you what, that turns out pretty good. Now guys, I know my videos are long, but the only way to give the viewers the detail needed to do this takes time. Everybody wants it now, right now. This piece on. This lower shaft, that is what hits this. This right here. So that is the stop. But also you have to clamp this clamp right here, okay? That piece up here is what hits this. So this ties everything together. This is what holds everything in there. Pro has turned off because it was too hot. Alright, so anyways, so now we're putting the this is the part that extends out, but that we're slipping this in. Okay, we're not gonna go all the way in. And we're lining up the notches. notches okay we're also going to slip this on and keep everything together okay now this when i put these together i like to have this face in a certain way so i'll probably have to come down down and adjust this after I get everything centered up and straight. T27. Torques. Alright, so now I'm going to show you. I'm going to pull this out. Pull it out. And that's it. See, it hits the stop. That's what you want. Okay, and also, these little O-rings. A little seal in here. I mean, they don't do much. I mean, I don't know what the hell they're for. This one here is pretty rubbery and uh, kind of wore out, but just sits in that groove just like that. Because now we're ready to start loading our stuff in here, our bearings and our couple springs. So if you look at this diagram, so this is the bottom. So I'm going to come up through here. So they want, okay, so that's the bearing at, uh, on that. Uh, lower tube assembly or, or lower drive chest. We know that's on. Right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to load the bearing. Okay, and the way they want you to load them is this side in first. See that? You want this side down. And while these are out, I can show you these springs. That's where they'll sit. Just like that. And when you loosen it up, it helps spread this thing apart. Actually, a lot of grease on this. That way, this, you know, plunges into the lower portion smoothly and comes apart smoothly. Yeah, to replace these things, you're looking like six and six hundred fifty bucks, I think, nowadays. It's ridiculous what things cost. Now I have problem solved, so um, somehow this got backwards. I must have thought the bottom was the top and the top was the bottom. So there's a there's a rivet right here. Okay, right there. Okay, and, and the notch on the one that's riveted to this drive shaft, it has to go in that channel. If you, if you go from that end, it just stops. Yeah, so that's what was going on. Got 
that's why I wouldn't articulate all the way in. Okay. Alright. Alright, so remember, this side goes down. I mean, if you don't take these things apart yourself, this is what you run into right here. I had to tear this thing all back apart. Someone labeled it wrong. Bottom was the top, top was the bottom, whatever. Alright, that's how that's going. Twist it around and hope for the best. Line your notches up. Let's get back up on the bench, huh? Me? So now we're at the top. Okay, so we slipped it in just like that. So you pay attention. So put that in. Okay, you just push that in. Now this you can push in. You don't want to do that. You want to pull this until it bottoms out. Okay? That's what you want. Then you're going to put the clamp on. Okay, you're going to put your old clamp on here. Like I said, I'm going to adjust the position of this because this is a sticker. It's supposed to face a certain way. Blah, blah, blah. You don't want to get sued. Because the asshole didn't know you weren't supposed to chop a fucking electrical line. See that? Whatever. Alright, so, so. I'm gonna pull this out again, okay? That's where I wanna be. Let's tighten it down. Alright, so that's all the way out. Pay okay, attention to what it looks like down there. Make sure that's facing the right way. Alright, let's tighten everything down. Alright, now let's make sure this thing actually goes back down there. this end. back to here almost.
Head on. That's better. Perfect. A lot better. Alright, again, so that is not seated all the way in. Alright? So, what you do is spin your chain a little bit. Careful not to touch yourself. Not what I wanted. Tighten that down. You're gonna spin that and I'll drop right in. What you're doing is you're lining up the, the shafts in there. T27. Alright, let's make sure it works. Remember guys, also, mark this stuff. If you're taking it apart, mark this, and then lay it out in such a way that it makes sense to you when you go put it back together. You have to have stuff located properly, or like you're gonna run into what I did, the thing wouldn't um, collapse back into itself because of this rivet, okay? Because it was backwards. The tube was flipped around. Uh, so keep that in mind guys, so another tip for y'all. Here we go again, a job that should have took maybe one hour, end up taking closer to two, because someone was in there messing around when they shouldn't have been. So just keep that in mind guys, you never know what you're going to get into when you start tearing this stuff apart. They only, you know, discovered, uh, hey, this thing's been apart and it's been, been uh, put back together backwards. Uh, hmm, makes you think. All right, so that concludes another video, guys. So thanks for sticking around. Stay tuned for the next video. Uh, you know, a couple things. Hopefully, if you ever work on one of these, it doesn't come to you like it came to me in uh, pieces. So I kind of kind of threw a curveball at me. It took me a minute to figure out that, you know, when I was thinking the top outer tube was the top, it was actually the bottom. So like I said, you guys got to pay attention because there's a rivet down on this portion, okay? Wherever it's at here. It's actually right here. I showed you guys earlier. It's actually right here, right? A little bump right there. So this channel, okay? If you start putting this stuff opposite or, or in backwards, It'll actually be like this, okay? And you can see this groove here was from the last guy forcing it. He was forcing it through. That groove ain't supposed to be there. It's supposed to just be these two here, these two, and then this one. That is the channel for the rivet, so keep that in mind. Hi right, guys, so like I said, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you guys some other time.